How many here? So we're not doing it at all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. For Good evening. Is there somebody who's missing? Okay, let's get started. Um, may I please have the approval of the minutes for the February 1st? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. We have seven items that we will be discussing this evening. The first one is Baruch College, a student activity fee increase for the undergraduate students. I'm going to put them all together collectively. Um, the student activity fee for the graduate students, Lehman College student activity fee increase, Brooklyn College student activity fee increase for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences in the day session, and York College for the student activity fee. And then uh, there is an, a, a change in the agenda. Uh, one item was deleted. Uh, do I have any questions or comments on this? All those in favor? Oh, excuse me. Do I have a motion? A motion to accept these items? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. No opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the, the final item is the policies and procedures concerning sexual assault, stalking, dating, and domestic violence against students. Do I have a, a motion to carry? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Professor Bell. Um, for Vice Chancellor Schaefer? Yes. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. <laughs> um, the items that um, Trustee Phillips discussed with you are now incorporated into the document. He said there were two changes. Why don't we take that out when we get to the item on the We are on the item. We are on. I'm sorry. It's on item uh, H. Oh, okay. I, I was waiting. I thought it was at the end of the... Uh, um, we already approved the other. We're moving very quickly. I think. <laughs> well, I looked away for a second, and yeah. there you are. Um, I'm sorry. The... the um, now we're working on this. Rece I received some comments uh, uh, last Friday, I guess it was, on the, uh, on the policy. Uh, one of them uh, was... Uh, uh, I think an appropriate uh, comment, which was that uh, we were inconsistent uh, in the document uh, in uh, usually but not always using the phrase alleged perpetrator rather than perpetrator. And um, the uh, university faculty senate with its usual eagle eye caught a couple instances where we had left out the word alleged. And we it's not a substantive change. It's, uh, it seems entirely appropriate. So yes, that change is going to be made. The other two comments I didn't think needed uh, 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 a change. Uh, one of them asked the question, which I think is clear from the context, that the policy on confidentiality has no uh, effect on our normal disciplinary procedures. In other words, if there's a full investigation and a decision is made that a student should be subject to a disciplinary proceeding, as a result of an incident of this type, um, that would proceed in the normal course. And nothing in this policy is intended to change any of that. Um, and then finally, there was just a, a, a comment uh, uh, that the f pointing to the fact, which is true, that sometimes uh, these allegations are not well-founded. Um, and that, I think, is uh, recognized in this document by the fact that it speaks of an investigation, but I didn't think any further uh, uh, discussion of that uh, was required in this document. So the, the change from uh, perpetrator to alleged perpetrator will be made. Uh, the other comments, while uh, helpful comments, I didn't think required any change. Just a question. Just a question. Yes, uh, Thank you for your comments, Vice Senator Schaefer. The, um, in the, 
You, you mentioned uh, the confidentiality of the, um, of the accuser, should we say, in this document. That, con that would also not be the case if a faculty member were accused. You mentioned it if a student were accused of some violation of the policy, but I think a faculty member so accused would also be able to face their accuser. Is that correct? Yes, of course. Yes. There's nothing in this policy that's intended to change our normal procedures, the disciplinary procedures, whether it's student or faculty. The policy really deals with an earlier period of time when an event occurs and a student needs counseling or wishes to report an incident, and it goes you know, to that period of time. But there's nothing in it that would in any way change our normal uh, due process procedures for either students or faculty. That's good. Thank you very much. Vice Chancellor Schaefer, should that be noted in the document that normal procedures will be followed? I don't think it's necessary because I don't think there's anything in the document that should call that into question. These procedures really deal with the period prior to the bringing of any kind of disciplinary proceeding. Okay. I, I have a question uh, for you, Vice Chancellor Schaefer, if I may. On, the, on part of the policy statement in, in the penultimate paragraph, we have educating and training all staff members, including counselors, public safety officers, and student affairs staff to assist victims in sexual assault. I would like to have that amended to include faculty and adjunct faculty who may encounter a student who is having an issue, uh, has confidence in that faculty individual and approaches them with their problem, especially if it's on the weekend the weekend uh, college program, and I think faculty members would jump right in and want to know exactly the procedure, and not that they have to be part of the training, but the educational process in the form of a, uh, a memorandum to guide a student who uh, certainly looks up to them for, for guidance. So I think that should be amended appropriately. It, um, if you, do you want to make a motion of that effect? I certainly, no. as a substantive matter, have no problem Very with that. Very much so. Yeah. Okay. So uh, may I have motion on? So moved. Okay. Um, seconded. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any questions? I just show, should note for the record that I'm not, I'm here as an observer, so I cannot make those motions. <laughs> Happy to do so. I'll, I'll make those, I'll make that change. Yeah, because I think it's very important. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to backtrack a little bit. Since we had the opportunity to vote collectively on the fee, the uh, student activity fee structures at each of the campuses discussed, Baruch, Lehman, Brooklyn, and York, I believe uh, <clears throat> Interim Vice Chancellor Jordan would like to uh, look at each one of these individually. I believe he may have a campus representative here to discuss them, uh, which we were not apprised of previously. So oh, please. So, um, should we not have had that information before we voted? Yes, that's correct. So, and I was just given that information. So, do you need so the, no, no, please. No, that no, is no. your point. No. The vote stands, though, right? The vote stands. It's moot. It's a moot point. Do no. you want someone to, 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 to speak? Well, if, if anyone on the committee would like more information, right. we have uh, members from just the four come campuses. Come we have members Sorry. from the four campuses uh, present. Yeah who are available to answer any questions that you may have okay. as a committee. Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll take that offline then. Well, no, no I, I think if, if there is some uh, additional input uh, that uh, either of the uh, representatives have that would have influenced our vote in a different way, I'd like to hear it. You know, I mean, we could always motion to reconsider. But, sure do that. So, uh, you know, is there any additional? I, I think that the uh, it's clear, you know, at least from our standpoint. Is, is there any, uh, Corey? You know, do you do you feel that there's any additional input 
Um, I reviewed the documents myself, and I feel pretty comfortable with how they are. I mean, I pretty much understand the need for the um, different fee increases for the, across the campuses. So I'm comfortable with the things that are as they are, as they are. I think, for the record, it wouldn't hurt hear some a summary or a brief. That's fair, I believe. I have no problem with that. Does anyone have any no, opposed? No, I don't have any problem. I agree with Trustee yeah. Foster. Okay, so if I may ask. Uh, representing Baruch here today is uh, uh, Dr. Corlise Thomas, uh, who is uh, Dean of Students of Baruch. Yeah. But, but, Excuse me. But before we get into this, um, Madam Chairman, could I uh, ask a question about your amendment? Because I want to make sure I get this. Going back to the uh, policy, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I take it you were reading from page four, paragraph number three. Uh, this is the first, uh, first page of the policy statement. Oh, it's on the first page. Yes. I see. Um, and, and which paragraph are we in? The next to the last paragraph, educating and training all staff members. Okay, we actually do have faculty listed later on, so that's why I got okay. confused. But as so it's that it's, it's but, but but no, that's all right. I will put it in that paragraph as well. I just wasn't sure which paragraph you were in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please proceed. Dr. Thomas. Uh, I would say that I'm joined today by the president of our or former president of our undergraduate student body. And um, essentially, our fees, and I'll take both the graduate and the undergraduate fee together, had not been increased in seven years for the undergraduates and nine for the graduate students. And those uh, fees that you see, the increases that you see, were fully supported by our student government and represent um, a student desire for a higher and more quality um, student programming and student life on campus, as well as intense support for our uh, health center, um, which we found needed the support or else we would have had to close the center within the next two years. And the students saw that and supported that, and therefore you see the fee increase. So, uh, so your hope is that, uh, your expectation, you know, is that with the student activity increase, <coughs> you know, that you'll be able to get more services? More student activity programming on campus, definitely. Mm -hmm. is, is there uh, at the campus level uh, some type of a process that ensures that? What's the process? Well, one of the things and uh, one of the things that the students voted for was a programming board to come in to be created on campus for next year. And so that in itself creates a process for students to more actively engage in campus life outside of clubs, organizations, the student government. Now there is a, a, a body essentially that any student will approach no matter their involvement on campus to actually increase our student life. Mm -hmm. okay. And will the new president be apprised of uh to what extent will he be involved? The new student body president? The new college. The college president. Oh, the president. new college president. Yeah. Absolutely. He, um, uh, Vice President Corpus has been in touch with him, and certainly uh, student life on campus has been a part of their conversation. I expect that as he comes on board in August, um, more information will be shared with him, and we expect his support. Certainly, we hope for it. Thanks. Uh, did you want to? Uh, yeah, Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Thank you. <coughs> Representing Lehman College uh, here today to speak to uh, the, this referendum is Vice President Jose Magdalena. Welcome. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Jordan, and thank you, committee members, for the opportunity to speak to the issue of our student activity fee increase. Um, as you will note in the documents, it has been 19 years since uh, we have uh, uh, proposed any increase in student activity fees. Uh, let me begin by saying that this initiative was uh, driven by our student body because they recognized that it would be impossible to continue to provide uh, the existing level of, of service, much less an improved level of service for students uh, using uh, dollars um, 
uh, a dollar value of 19 years from 19 years ago. Uh, the proposed uh, increases uh, drew significant support from our student body. Uh, they represent investments in several critical areas, including our tutorial center, the uh, student health center, uh, uh, the club board, which is the entity that provides funding for student organizations, our student government, uh, and uh, the, I, I think that the, one of the models that student government used is, in, in which I think is appropriate here, uh, we pay less and we get less. And um, I think this is an important step in um, bringing the uh, level of funding to an appropriate level for a senior college like Lehman. Any questions? Will, will this also mean that uh, Sometimes there's a feeling that when there's more money that's added, you just continue to just add on the top. Will there be a review also of what needs to be discontinued? Yes. In the context of our budget deliberations, mm -hmm. uh, what can be discontinued, what should be discontinued, is always on the table. Thank you. If I may comment, um, one of my other hats is as chair of the faculty executive committee at Lehman College. And I certainly um, support this uh, item. Uh, it's clear that uh, this long delay in changing this budget at Lehman has uh, hurt the students, uh, hurt the student organizations, uh, and I think it's an entirely appropriate measure. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the committee for your support. Thank you. <coughs> next, next we have representing Brooklyn College. Dean Milko Morales. Can, can you come over? You have to come over here, so we're we'll waiting until you get here. Take your time. You can sit right here, ma'am. Um, and I have a student with me. Her name is Samantha Jones. Um, thank you. My name is Vanessa Green. I'm the Assistant Dean of Student Development. Um, I work closely with the um, student government. Hi, Corey. Hi. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, uh, today, um, we're here to um, get the approval of our increase for the Study Abroad Student Association. Samantha is the uh, Public Relations Officer for that organization, and um, I'd like to, to say a few words. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the, You have to speak a little louder, I'm sorry. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share for Study Abroad Association, SASA. I'm the Public Relations Officer, and we're here today f to have the student activity fee increased so that students can have more opportunities to study abroad and explore the different cultural aspects that most students need so that they can broaden their the horizon and educational purposes. For instance, I'm a student and I would love the opportunity to study abroad. And if I may give you just a brief example, I was supposed to travel to Italy last week and because of my visa situation, I was unable to do so. However, if we were able to establish this association, we can help students to go through the process or finding the exact places they're supposed to go, the things that they're supposed to do in order to accomplish what needs to be done so that the travel process can be much smoother, more enjoyable, and they can learn something from it. And if we can have the referendum pass, then students like myself can get the opportunity to study abroad. Is, is this an, um, this would be within the context of the fee, inc the fee that we have already approved? Yeah. This, uh, so it's not an additional no. So, where, so where, would, where would the focus be in the study abroad? Well, for this area, we're not going to focus on one 
region or one country. We're basically trying to help students to provide them with financial, the financial aspects of it so that they can be able to go ahead and study abroad. The college has had to give up some funding to allow students to apply for support for study abroad. This is to increase that because the numbers of students are ever increasing that want right. to study abroad. And the college has about 20 programs at the moment all over in all the continents and there's a huge demand for it. And this is to allow more and more students to be able to do that. So, and it's very Excellent. consistent with our new president's goals, so. Excellent. No, that helps. I mean, w would you see, though, an increase in, in a certain region of the world? I mean, is, is, for example, is this just well, is this how well thought out is the strategic thrust of the study abroad increases? The kids are, you will? Well, I'm Milga Morales, Dean of Student yes. Affairs. Um, well, one of the things that I think we can applaud the students for is that they're working very closely with the undergraduate dean's office. Um, and the student abroad programs at Brooklyn College are housed in the undergraduate dean's office. Um, the new Office of International Studies and Global Engagement, uh, which the president is very much in support of, and actually I think they're actually recruiting a director for that, is also a place where the students will be able to go for guidance. Because I think um, the idea of study abroad, as you know, they want to do it, but where to focus, which, you know, which will be the wonderful programs that they'll choose. I don't think that they've gotten to that yet, but we do have great models. Um, the China program is a program that has gotten, I mean, all, I don't know how many students have been in that program. It's just wonderful. Um, and they go in the summer and they go in, in the January. spring. Right, exactly. Uh, so we do have some great models. And, I, and, and to the students' credit, Thank they you. are really looking very closely at these models. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you'll get to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> the Mellon kids are in Italy now. <laughs> oh, they're there. Maybe next and time. Representing, representing York College today is uh, President Keyes. Really going to be brief because I know you have many other things on the agenda and you have already voted. So I want to thank you. I really want to thank you for the endorsement um, and thank you for the support to York and the other colleges. You know the stories better than we can tell them. And what I would pledge to do, if in a year or two you'd like to know how we have accounted, if you will, for that money, how we have used it to support students, whether it's in the child care center, whether it's in study abroad, whether it's in athletics, I think uh, that might be something you'd like to hear and we pledge to come back and give you that kind of report. Um, I'm joined by my vice president and by a student who is also a USS representative and was really great to hear you support it, uh, this, this uh, action so resoundingly. Thank you, trustee. No, thank you very much. I mean, you know, naturally we get a chance to read all of the documents ahead of time, so that way if there were any big issues, you know, we would have addressed it. But, but, but it's very, you know, what I like about what you said is that it would be a more useful process, you know, for us to hear from all of the colleges uh, a year from now, you know, what have you done, you know, so that way we can see what the impact is. That, that would be very instructive, in fact. to do it. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the, that's the last that's uh, board. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Campuses. And now I'd like to call on our interim Vice Chancellor Jordan for his report. Well, thank you, Trustee Facilli. Uh, there is one item that I'd like to update the board on, uh, the Student Affairs Committee, I'm sorry, on and that is the CUNY relief efforts uh, focused on uh, earthquake victims of Haiti, Chile, and Turkey. You'll recall that back in February, um, I reported to this group that the, the university and its campuses 
uh, were focused on relief efforts and support of students from these countries. I'm pleased to report at this point that uh, an estimated $200,000 in tuition waivers, scholarships, and emergency assistance has been offered specifically to uh, over 32 students uh, from Haiti by their campuses. Uh, in addition, eight international students uh, from Haiti were awarded uh, tuition assistance grants of uh, $2,000 each through the, the Institute for International Education. Campus relief efforts in support of uh, these three countries uh, have been phenomenal to date. Um, campus relief efforts to raise funds raised an estimated $35,000, uh, most of which uh, went to support uh, Haitian relief efforts. These efforts uh, have been supported widely by faculty, staff, and students alike, with a great deal of momentum coming from student clubs and organizations. Uh, the funds raised uh, have been earmarked uh, and distributed to major relief organizations, including the American Red Cross, Yale Haiti, the Mayor's Fund to Advance New York City, Doctors Without Borders, and UNICEF. That, Madam Chair, is my opinion for. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chancellor Jordan. I think uh, your comments are wonderful. The last session we had in February, we were all very concerned about the students and the status of the students, so we're yes. very pleased to hear that. Uh, at this juncture, the Can I have a question? I have a yes. question. The, uh, I, I think, uh, I, in fact, I think, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor, I think your efforts in those areas have uh, really been very good and, uh, and exemplary. So I just want to thank you for your leadership in those areas. Um, well, thank you. I, I do have to say that uh, the efforts really have come from the campuses, uh, from concerned students and faculty, as well as staff. And my role has been one of coordinating, but it's been a real pleasure to work with uh, campus student leaders uh, who uh, organize many, many events across the university to raise funds to collect uh, donations uh, uh, and to offer support uh, for the people of Haiti and Chile, uh, as well as Turkey. What, what um, sometimes when events have passed, the, there's a tendency for individuals, uh, I mean, it's not in the spotlight, you know, and so uh, donations and, energy uh, begins to wane. What are we going to do to keep this alive? Uh, what's the next step to revitalize our efforts, you know, to continue to, I mean, money is, is still going to be needed. I mean, although, you know, we're turning our effort now to the oil crises, rightfully so, but we don't want to be driven in the university like the media is driven by just paying attention to just what happens to be the flavor of the month because people are still suffering. And, and so it's, it's important for us to keep these issues uh, active and, and at a high level. And I'm just wondering, what is the plan in terms of that? Well, uh, I'm sure that the chancellor will uh, report to the board on, on this. But one of the things that you should know is that the chancellor has um, asked uh, President Perugia, uh along with community college presidents. Uh, and President Perugia is, share, is chairing this group to really focus on the question of what the university can do to support the rebuilding of, uh, of Haiti. Uh, and so President Perugia has been doing a tremendous amount of work in terms of uh, reaching out to, um, to community partners and organizations. And uh, I'm sure that um, she will be reporting to the chancellor uh, shortly on, on those activities, but uh, it is still um, uh, front and center in the minds of uh, the chancellery and the university. And just very yes, briefly, please. there is going to be at the end of this month a major meeting with the chancellor uh, to which many of the uh, graduates of our health care programs that are already doing uh, projects in Haiti are coming to report on what their activities are uh, and what the next steps as the 
as far as the university could be in supporting these efforts. Uh, and we're concentrating our focus right now in um, the healthcare area, in both sending people from here who have graduated from our programs and our curricula and in all of the healthcare disciplines, as well as beginning to think through what kinds of opportunities there are for training. And the other area that we've been able to really take a look at is the whole teachers for young children because there are still several hundred thousand children that are not yet back in school. So we're also beginning to look at what we can do both in terms of sending people there as well as training local people in rudimentary uh, teacher education with young people. So there is a very active effort across the university to do something that's more that's sustainable yeah, over time, yeah, yeah, over yeah, a period. It, I mean, it looks as if this will be a, a long-term effort over a period of years that we're willing to be engaged in. Okay, thank you. That's commendable. It really is. Very I'd good. be interested in hearing the report, but that'd be fantastic. Your meeting. Any questions? The Committee on Student Affairs and the Special Programs will now go into executive session to consider student disciplinary appeals. <clears throat> because the uh, college disciplinary hearings in each case were not open to the public, this session will be closed as well. So moved. <coughs> any, any, uh, those, Please those? vacate the room. Okay, let's go.